Welcome back to Anderson Smoke Show. Today we've got the all new Char Griller Gravity 980. We're gonna unbox this, we're going to assemble it, and we're gonna show you what this new grill is all about. Stick around, see how we do it. If you're new here, my name is Andrew and I'm an engineer. So everything you see here is gonna be precise and to the point. And as we put this Char Griller together, you're gonna get the perspective of an engineer. You're not gonna wanna miss it. Now let's get started. Now Char Griller sent me this grill to review. I'm pretty excited about it because I, I really loved my Masterbuilt Gravity series. And according to Char Griller, they think that they've perfected the gravity fed charcoal smoker. So I really want to give this thing a try. Now I haven't opened this yet. As you see, I just cut the straps. I am a little concerned because this box is beat up a little bit. I believe should be able to just pull this right off like so. And I like to keep the box off to the side. And that's where I put all my trash as I start to unpack everything. Looks like the instructions were right on top. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start unpacking it. We got a grate here. It looks to be quite a bit of components here. This grill's huge. Now these Gravity 980s come in two colors. They've got kind of a royal blue and a cranberry color. I actually wanted the blue, so that worked out pretty well. As you can see, this Gravity 980 is a monstrosity. This thing is huge and I'm excited. Let's take a look inside. I have not looked in there yet. See what kind of hardware. Oh, I do like that big heavy lid. Check the hopper here. Oh. Now, we finally got everything unpacked. Well, as you can see, there are a lot of components to this Gravity 980. I feel like this is gonna take a little while. Let's get into these instructions and see what we've gotta do first. All right, so step 1A, we're going to be attaching the grease collection channel with 10 of the B bolts. All right, so we're gonna be attaching the grease collection channel onto the bottom of the grill here. You've got one end where it's closed and you've got one end where it's open. We want the open end to be up here like so, but we're gonna go through and we're actually going to start all of these screws. We're just getting them started because we should be able to just slide and lock this in place in just a moment here. There. You just get it in place and slide it down and we should be able to go through and just tighten these up now. All right, so step two, we're going to be attaching the grease cup housing we're gonna use those four screws that were left over from step one. We're just gonna slide lock this in place, get it tightened up. As you can see, we want the opening for the trough to face the opening for the trough. As you can see, we've got the opening for the trough right here. We're going to get this into position and then we're going to slide and pull it into place and we will tighten this up. Just like so. All right, so we're on step three. We're gonna be attaching the legs. I'm gonna start with the legs closest to that grease collection. So that's going to be 44 and 21. 44 is gonna to wanna to go to the left based off of the orientation we've got the grill. And 21 is gonna to go to the right. We're gonna be using 12 of the B, 12 of the G locking, and 12 of the H. So it's going to go H, G, B, just like you see here in this diagram. And we're going to need three of these per leg. So let's get started. All right, so they've got these legs numbered and they're numbered in the instructions as well so you know right where they've got to go. Uh, so 44 is gonna go to the left of this grease collection tray based off of the orientation that we have here. 
All right, so we've got leg 21. So one, the other one that goes on here by the grease collection, we'll get it started here with one screw. I can already tell you that I'm pretty impressed with the build quality of this Char Griller Gravity 980. It is a heavy grill. That's what I like to see. We're gonna attach these other legs. We wanna go number 15 on the left and 18 on the right. And we've got leg 18 here. I'm gonna do the same, just get it started by hand. All right, we're on to step four. We're gonna be attaching that bottom shelf using four C's and four G's. All right, it'll be easiest here is if you just hold it and try and get a couple of them started. All right, we've got those started. Now let's get down here and get these started as well. We'll go through here, tighten these up. All right, we're moving on to step five. We're gonna be attaching the wheels here. We've got these swivel caster wheels there, and then we've got the plastic wheels with the axle there. We're using two of the eye washers, two of the J Cotter pins, and three L caps. All right, so these swivel wheels, pretty straightforward. Lock them in place so that the wheels don't turn or spin. The legs here are pre-threaded. We're just gonna start turning these till we get them nice and tight. Now, if you don't lock these, they're gonna spin and you're never gonna get them nice and tight. So just do this, you can do it by hand. See, there we go. Now when I unlock this, everything is good. So we're gonna put the big wheels on. These go underneath the hopper, pretty straightforward. The rod goes through it. We have a washer and a cotter pin. Just gonna put it on like so. I've already attached one side, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run this through. We'll do the same on the other side. Now with these wheels, you've got a closed end and you've got a honeycomb end. The honeycomb goes in towards the axle, the closed end goes towards the outside. So just make sure when you're putting it together, you're doing that in the right order. Get that washer on and the cotter pin. So now they've got these little locking end caps there. They got a metal inside that locks and grabs along that axle. I've got a rubber mallet here. Essentially, I'm just going to put that on. Give that a little tap. Now that's locked in place. All right, we're on to step six. We're gonna attach the gravity placard to the front of the grill using four of the D bolts. All right, so this is pretty straightforward. The bolts are going to feed down through the legs like so. And these are pre-threaded there. And we'll just use those to get it started. All right, and I'll take my screwdriver here and we'll get this nice and tight. So step seven shows us removing the liner of the hopper. We did that early on before we actually went through the steps. So that part's already done. If you haven't done that, go ahead and do that now. For step eight, A and B, at least for A, they show the grill laying on its side. The way I had it configured, I didn't want to flip it around, so I just stood it up. But we're going to attach the bottom of the hopper, the ash clean out, all of that assembly using four E's and four N's. Let's go ahead and do that. So for this part, I'm just gonna get in here and get these started. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line these screws up, get them started, and then shift it back so that it stays in place. And then I will reach in from the front and tighten these up. Now there's a screw that's gonna go right up front and in the back, we're gonna get this added to. You can't add these ahead of time because they don't have that slide lock set up like the others do. All right, we're on to step nine. We're gonna be attaching the fan and the associated housing using four Bs and four Gs. All right, we'll just shove that in there like so. It's already lined up, so we'll get our screwdriver loaded up and ready to go. We're gonna attach the knob here for the clean out. Just screws right in. 
All right, so step 10A and 10B are basically the same. We've got the handle brackets and all of the associated hardware. All right, so what you wanna do is you wanna take your C and start it through the hole just like so. You'll see that you're not gonna be able to turn that at all. It kind of sits in place like that. Then we have an H, a G, and an M. That's your wing nuts and everything else. And all we have to do is really just get it started. All right, make sure it's lined up. They got some locking tabs in there. Get that nice and snug. There's some grooves here on the handle and there's some tabs on the inside. You wanna get those lined up and that'll go right down on like that. And we essentially need to do the exact same thing that we just did, but you need to work on getting the handle started at the same time. We're gonna get that nice and snug. And we'll go over here and make sure this one's nice and snug, and it is. And that handle is nice and sturdy now. Look at that. It's a heavy duty door, that's for sure. All right, we're on to step 11 here. We're going to be attaching that damper handle that goes on the back. We're using two of the F nuts. So this is go gonna go on like so. We're just gonna take two of these F nuts here. Get them started by hand. And I've got an 11 millimeter socket here. Then I'm gonna use it to snug those up. Just like so. All right, we're on to step 12. We're gonna be attaching the vent on the back. We've got four B's and a rubber gasket. All right, so you've got this rubber gasket. It's gonna sit just like so. And we've got four B's. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with two on top. That way we get this gasket in place. Hand tighten them there. Next step, 13A, we're going to be attaching some screws on the opposite side of the hopper with two C's and two G's. And we're just going to hand tighten these. These are gonna be used to mount the shelf and controller in place. All right, just like that. We've got three K's, they're gonna screw in right here and these are just for hanging your tools and accessories off the side, your grill brush, your spatula, tongs, whatever you're working with today. And you can just hand tighten those. I made a slight mistake. You want to make sure that you run this wire here through this rubber grommet there. There we go. Now we can hang that shelf and put these other C's and G's in. Now we'll get in here and tighten these up. Step 14, we're gonna be attaching the brackets for the front shelf. As you can see, we're using four B's, four G's, and four H's. And when you attach these brackets, you want those tabs to be facing away from the chamber. I'll show you how I do it. So I've already got these screws preloaded with the locking washer and the washer. We're going to put it in like so. We'll just get it started. And you can see that tab is facing outside. And I'm gonna come down here. And we'll get this one going too. And now that we've got them both in, we'll get it nice and snug. Get it started like so. Get this one nice and snug, and then we'll snug up this top one too. 
So we're going to get in here. We're going to attach this like so. And then we are going to screw in two of the A's. We're going to do that by hand here to start. And I'll take my screwdriver here and we'll just tighten that down. So how this works, you want to fold it, you just pick up and the whole thing folds down like so. We're on to step 16. We're going to be attaching this bracket using two B's and two G's. All right, we're on to step 17. Using four B's, we're going to attach these two brackets to the top of the manifold. We're going to put the manifold in now. This opening goes over here towards the hopper. You'll see exactly where it's got to slide in towards that firebox. And then it's just going to lay in place on that bracket we just installed. Just like that. All right, we've got that manifold cover drip tray. Basically, this is going to set right on top. And those brackets that we just installed have two like tongue and groove that locks it in place. So that's good. Now we've got our bottom rack here and we're just going to start piecing that together and putting it in place. It's nice because these are actually pretty small, make cleanup a lot easier since they're coated. Things shouldn't stick to it too much. We could actually put these right in the dishwasher. Just like that. Then we've got our top shelf here. And it'll slide in place just like so. So we've got our grease cup here that's gonna go on that collect grease collection bracket down here at the bottom. It's got a little handle on it. You'll see what I'm talking about. And it's gonna slide right in place. This next piece here looks like a paddle or a spatula. This is not a cooking utensil. This is for the air dam. That's so that you can shut the air off and that's how you're going to close off the firebox and choke that fire out. The next is the ash collection pan. You're gonna open this up front and you're gonna place it right inside like this. As the charcoal burns, as the ashes fall and the little briquettes fall through that grate, it's gonna fall into that collection bucket. All right, so the next step, we've got the hopper liner here and we've got the grate and the slot for the fire starter. We actually have to insert this into the bottom of that hopper insert. Now to do so properly, you're gonna to wanna to start like so and just get it in and then pull it down in place like that. So that's actually gonna hang from the bottom. Then we're gonna come over here and take the entire thing, slide it down in just like so. And then right here is where you'll load your fire starter. Perfect. Next step, we're gonna attach uh, a K here. You'll see the threaded hole in the back. We'll just turn that and tighten it by hand, just like so. All right, for these next steps, we're going to be attaching and connecting all of the wires here. And you're going to see exactly what we have to connect here. So we're gonna go yellow to yellow. We're gonna go red to red. You might have to slide these sheathings back just a little bit. Make sure they snap in place. We're gonna go white to white, just like so. Now we're going to take this bolt off. You need to loosen these. because all these wires are gonna tuck back here into this tray like so, and you need to slide this down in place like that. 
Make sure all your wires are tucked inside there. So this cover here is held in place by a wing nut. You're gonna to wanna to take that off. It's mounted right there. That just exposes all of your wires. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna be making our connections. Pretty straightforward. You've got a three pin here. It snaps in place. You got a two pin. It snaps in place. You've got small black connector snaps in place and then this one here is for your power cord so then what you want to do is you need to take all of these wires here we need to tuck them back behind this just make sure that you leave your power connector out like this then you take your wing nut up here and you lock it in place. All right, so that's it for the assembly on the Char Griller Gravity 980. Took us about two hours to put it together, but don't forget I'm running cameras. It's hot out today, so we're doing a lot of moving around so that we can get the shots. I'm excited to run this thing, and you should be too, because coming soon, we're going to have an initial burn-in and overview. We're also gonna do a comparison between the Gravity 980 by Char Griller and the Gravity 560 by Master Boat. We're gonna talk about the strengths and weaknesses of both grills and why one may benefit you more than the other. So stick around and I'll see you next time at Anderson Smoke Show.